You're watching this because you're likely dealing with a bad client. Or maybe you're trying to prepare for when that time comes. If it's the latter, I'll tell you right now, don't worry about it. I know it's easy to say, but honestly, bad clients don't come around that often. I mean, yes, they're a thing that you gotta be prepared for as a freelancer, but in my nine years of freelancing, I've had well, like less than a handful of bad clients. So don't worry about it too much. Don't stress about it too much. When they do happen, you can easily deal with them using the steps I'm going to teach you about on this video. So buckle up and let's get to it. Step number one, keep it professional. I know you likely want to scream and shout, but take a breath, breathe in, breathe out, and try to deal with it in a calm manner. I know, again, it's easier said than done. I know. <laughs> I tend to take things very personally, but learn from my mistakes, take a breath, and try to respond to your client in the most professional way possible, okay? I'm talking about like as professional as you can be, even more than you would in a normal day. This way you can kind of kill them with kindness, and you also don't risk making matters even worse. So step number one, keep it calm, keep it professional. Now step number two is you want to try to see it from their side. I know it can seem unreasonable what they're asking you to do, but try your best to see it from their point of view. And I know this is no excuse, but from my experience, sometimes they're just having a bad day and throwing it all out on you. So you know, again, take a breath and try to see it from their side. I know I've dealt with this in the past where I even got on a call with a client before where I thought I was going to have to fire them on the spot and I saw it from their side and I truly understood where they were coming from. And honestly, sometimes they may just not know any better. It may be their first time hiring or they may not know a lot about the service that you offer. So again, take a breath, respond with patience. Patience is key here and I mean, I honestly need that reminder every single day. Now, step number three is try your best to make it right. Well, I don't believe that the client is always right. We can usually try to make it better for them. Now, there's a fine line between making it better and letting your client step all over you. You definitely want to know your boundaries and stick to them. Like, please don't let them, you know, just ask for revisions that require a whole new project, for example. Or like, don't deal with never-ending revisions where the client themselves don't even know what they actually want. So they keep asking and asking and asking for you to review it. But I mean, if they're unhappy with a color or a font, in most cases, you can easily fix them. And even if you don't allow revisions, maybe sometimes break the rules a little bit. <laughs> Again, this is in a case-by-case -case basis. So if you feel like their request is unreasonable, or if it takes too much time out of your day, or if it's going to look bad in the end, by all means, don't do it. And remember, you're the expert in this, not them. Like, again, for example, I've had a client before just the man a revision on a project that we had delivered and gotten approved like six months before but they just wanted the whole thing redone at that time for free so i just you know stood my ground and said no but you know, in some cases, it's easier to just do it than it is to fight it. And I'll give you another example. Like if a client asked me, for example, to do a post with 30 random hashtags that have nothing to do with their business, I would first of all tell them that, hey, this is not a good idea because of X, Y, and Z. But if they kept insisting, I would probably tell them, okay, hey, let's test this out for a week or so. And then I would send them a report, show them the results and kind of tell them, I told you so, but but in a nice and professional way. And of course, step number four, if all else fails, ask for help. If you're working with Upwork, for example, you can easily ask them to step in and help you with your issue. In my opinion, that's one of the biggest perks of the platform, even though I only had to use it once. Like I had this client a couple years ago where I delivered the whole work and then they refused to pay me or they didn't want to release the funds. They literally didn't want any changes. They wouldn't tell me what's wrong with it. They just wanted their money back. And Upwork thankfully stepped in. They saw that I had done everything that we had agreed on and they paid me my fair share. <laughs> Please note, this was one time in over nine years on the platform. So again, I don't want you guys to worry about this. I just want you guys to be prepared for when the time comes and when it does happen so you can know 
it'll be okay. And also, please remember, I can't stress this enough, this only works if you have a contract in place and if you have the milestone funded. Please don't do any work on Upwork without having the milestone funded. This means the client has paid the full thing to Upwork and then in the end, once you deliver the work, Upwork will release the funds to you. It's meant to keep you safe and to keep the client safe, so please, don't skip on that, okay? Now, if you have any questions about freelancing or Upwork or anything like that, let me know down in the comments or shoot me a DM over on Instagram. I'm always there to help you guys. And in the meantime, check out this video right here on how I get clients on Upwork and I'll see you right there. Bye.